How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now today we are going to take a look at an interesting little product from Thermal Grizzly and that is their Carbonaut Thermal Pads. Now usually when you build your system you're going to use like a thermal paste to help cool your CPU but the problem with that is that it runs out firstly and then also you can sometimes put on a too much and then it's going to spill over and make just a giant mess on your entire motherboard uh, and potentially even get into your socket which is a total mess uh, or you can put on too little and that is going to reduce or affect performance. So this is where Thermal Grizzly's Carbonyl Pads comes in because it is pretty much just a tiny little carbon fiber pad that just, it's so small and so light. Literally you can blow it and it's going to fly off. Uh, but it's a thermal pad that is reusable that you can use multiple of times saying multiple, we'll get into that. And then also it gets rid of any inconsistencies you might have in your temperatures because it's the exact same amount every single time. Now, as for these pads, you do get them in a multiple sizes that are unfortunately not one size fits all. Some fit on the LGA 1151 for Intel, some for AM4, AMD, some for your NVIDIA GPUs like your 2080. You even get a different one for a 2080 Ti and then also for like Threadripper because it is massive. Uh, so you do get them in different sizes. You will uh, need to make sure you get the right one for your system. Currently, I have the 38 millimeter here for my Ryzen 7 1800X and then I have the 32 millimeter for my 8700K Intel CPU. So we're gonna test these and see how they perform. I just realized now that I actually did it the wrong way around. So AMD this side and Intel this side. <laughs> it matches the opposite colors because Intel and AMD. AMD and Intel, never mind, never mind. But you can also actually, if you do buy one that's too big, let's say you buy the 38, but you need a 32, you accidentally ordered one, then you can also cut them actually down to size with a scissor and it, it'll work, but yeah, you'll have to be really careful because again, it is so thin, it's a 2.2 millimeters thick. So it's really thin and uh, it, could possibly tear really easily. So be careful for that. Now the pricing is a tad a bit high, but again, you can reuse them a multiple of times. But because of that, it is going to depend on your use case. If you're only gonna build like a system once a year, then this is not gonna be for you really. This is gonna be for people who taste a lot of different hardware, um, build multiple of systems, that don't want to spend that much on thermal paste because it can get quite expensive. It's crazy actually how fast you go through like a thermal paste like this. It's even one as big as this one and yeah, it gets quite expensive. So that's this is where these ones come in, where you can reuse them. And I honestly do really like that idea. So then getting into our performance benchmarks, Firstly, the hardware that I'm going to use. So this side, again, I have the 8700K that I'm gonna overclock to five gigahertz at 1.3 volts. And then I'm going to use the Deepcool Castle 360EX. And then moving to the AMD side, I'm going to use the Ryzen 5 3600 on the system. And we're going to see how that performs, but I'm going to use the stock included Rafe cooler. So one is going to be liquid cool and one is going to be uh, air cooled. We're going to just see how they perform. I'm going to do a just benchmark with the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste and see how that performs. And then I'm going to move on to the Thermal Pads and see how they perform idle and then also under IDA64 stress test. So now getting into the installation for these thermal pads, uh, they are kind of a bit finicky. You actually have to precisely place them on the chip. Otherwise, 
it's not gonna perform that well. They literally state on the manual that it must completely cover the contact surface and uh, not protrude uh, over the CPU. So yeah, it has to be perfect. Now then, after testing the temperatures, both with the thermal base and then also with the new Carbonaut thermal pads, I wasn't really expecting the thermal pads to do better than the thermal paste and it didn't but it was actually pretty uh, close and especially again because it is reusable it is really handy because of uh, that now also a mention um it is turning into summer here in south africa and it was pretty hot day at around 29 degrees ambient i don't have an aircon in this room so the temperatures did fluctuate around there but hopefully these attempts will give you just an indicator of how good they perform so starting off with our 8700k first so i overclock it to 5 gigahertz on all six cores at 1.3 volts now, firstly, with the pace on idle, it reached 36 degrees at silent 1100 RPM mode. So that was the lowest these fans could go. Compared to the thermal pace, which also did 36 degrees at 1100 RPM. So on idle, there wasn't really a difference there. But as for the IDA64 stress states, there was a bit of a difference. So with the thermal pace again, that reached 79 degrees at 1900 rpm fan speed but the thermal pads was quite a bit higher at 86 degrees so around seven degrees higher now temperatures did fluctuate throughout the day somewhat around one or two degrees maybe uh, but it is definitely a bit hotter the thermal pads so around five to six degrees four to six degrees difference so you are gonna see that but moving on to amd side again with the blue for some reason but the ryzen 5 3600 which i did a turn on over boost uh, precision over boost which clocked it to a four gigahertz at a 1.35 volts so with the Thermal paste on idle, it reached 65 degrees at 800 RPM, again with the stock cooler. And with the pads, that reached exactly the same at 65 degrees at 800 RPM. So no difference on idle, but getting into the IDA64 stress test, there, there wasn't really that much of a difference as well, with the thermal pace reaching 81 degrees at 3100 RPM and 83 degrees, 2 degrees different with the thermal pads. There wasn't actually that much a difference. Again, there could be some ambient fluctuation going on there, but mostly it is almost the exact same. So actually on Ryzen, it did really well. Intel with their non-solder on chip, it does get a lot hotter. So that's that. AMD just does better in temperatures currently. So that is our temperatures with the carbonyl pads against like the thermal grizzly cryonaut thermal paste. We're reaching on Intel around four to six degrees higher with the carbonyl pads and on AMD, was pretty close to like two degrees difference again that could be with some fluctuation going on so that is it for the temperatures uh, i'm gonna open these up now and see how the pads actually looks because i haven't actually seen how they look if they're misformed or if they just burst into flames i don't know so we're gonna check those out now so you guys can see the, how they look after they've actually been used. So this is the Intel one and this is the AMD one. You can actually on the AMD see all of the lines where the cooler pressed down on the thermal pad and the CPU where it actually left a mark. With the Intel one, you can actually get, see those marks there. It does look like it's wet, but it isn't. I'm just, yeah, I'm not sure why it did that. Maybe it's a lot of heat that actually came from that specific part where it kind of like decolored the, the thermal pad also i'm not sure if you can actually see this but in the corner there on the amd one it's a small like cut out where it's not the entire section is cut off but it's a small like break or tear 
in the thermal pad where I again tiny like a millimeter misplaced the the pad on the CPU and that could happen if you just like install the cooler and you move it a slight a small amount that could happen so again these pads are really easy to tear so be careful for that so that's pretty much it for my look at Thermal Grizzly's Carbonaut Thermal Pads. Now, as for my thoughts on these, uh, I like them, but I wouldn't say that they're going to replace Thermal Paste. So they perform quite well, uh, but a bit hotter than Thermal Paste. So if I do use, or if I'm going to do like any uh, uh, th like dedicated thermal stuff like when I'm going to benchmark any coolers or any CPUs I need to have precise temps then I'm most likely not going to use these but if I'm going to just do a build and I don't want to spend money on thermal paste then these will actually be quite useful again I can reuse them I'm not exactly sure how many times still after this because just from one use I can already see some uh, some misformed outlines because of the AMD cooler and with the Intel one I can already see some decolorization going on. I'm not sure again if it's going to impact performance there and then how many times I'm going to be able to use it after this one test but again I will let you guys know in the comments below. I'll pin a comment there and I'll tell you guys if it's one or two or even like 20 uh, uses after they actually failed or, or teared. So just check that out if you are watching this video but I like the use case it is there you can use it multiple of times so yeah definitely check them out if you wanted to get <laughs> these I will leave links in the description where you can get them on Amazon and then also on Rebel Tech if you do live here in South Africa so yeah good not the best but I, I like the idea Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, if you did, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always, and I'll check all of you guys next time. Cheers guys.